In 2016, one year after the mass die-off of Saiga antelopes, a team of researchers returned to the Kazakh steppe. They wanted to find out how many Saiga had survived. The scientists spent days searching the Betpakdala for the few remaining animals. This conservation area, about the size of France, was previously home to 240,000 Saiga, of which 200,000 died. It wasn't easy for expedition leader Stefan Zuta to return to this place of death. I was really shocked when I saw how many animals were dying back in 2015. I was in the field myself and saw with my own eyes the first dead Saiga lying there. It was the first place where it happened, and I was right there. Huge mounds of earth where thousands of animals were buried still testify to the die-off, along with the countless bleached bones lying among the low bushes. British veterinarian and antelope expert Richard Koch also witnessed the disaster that was triggered by bacteria. The idea that the bacteria is present in the animals, and we have confirmed that it does occur in healthy animals, um, and it overloads. It, it, something triggers the growth of the bacteria and it kills the saiga. The second hypothesis um, is actually more of an environmental source of uh, pastorella, which uh, are ingested by the animal, uh, causing an overload. And, and this would require an amoeba. This is a different organism, uh, which is infected by the bacteria, and then at that wet season period in May, um, May uh, become active, the bacteria become active, and so the grazing animals in, in, ingest this uh, and die as a consequence. At the time, the expedition members feared it would lead to the total extinction of the saiga antelope. But what happened amazed everyone. A baby boom in the steppe. That's because at the age of one, females usually bear one calf. As they age, they tend to have twins. And older, larger females may have triplets. That means they invest a lot in the production of offspring. And that allows the populations to recover very, very quickly. Even after catastrophic events, like in 2015. The researchers now estimate the number of Saiga at 250,000 again, as many as before the mass die-off. The joy the many offspring bring is offset by concern. The Saiga are slowly returning to the area where the mass die-off began. Could death still be lurking there in the grass? The possibility of this occurring again is very high, and uh, the, the question is simply when um, and exactly what the uh, trigger factors will be. But we can be reasonably certain this will relate to, to weather. Um, it may be driven by climate. Um, uh, so the, the frequencies, if you like, of, of climate-related events which drive humidity, temperature, and then influence either the bacteria in the animal or the bacteria in the environment, uh, it will happen again, I have no doubt. But human beings also pose a huge threat to the saiga. Poachers hunt the animals for sale to China, where their horns are considered to have healing properties. The saiga's habitat is also shrinking. There are three large populations of saiga in Kazakhstan, the Ural group in the west of the country, the Ustyurt group on the border with Uzbekistan, and the largest, Betpakdala, in the center of the country. The saiga herds move back and forth during the year. The Kazakh government wants to build a highway between the Caspian Sea and the Kazakh capital, Nur Sultan, passing right through Betpakdala, even though there's an alternative route further north. The saiga get so stressed by every movement, and especially cars, even if they're far away on the horizon. They run away immediately. So if there was a road, it would be fatal. They wouldn't even approach the road anymore. And even if they weren't completely prevented from crossing, they would at least be stopped for a while, and their natural cycle of migration would be disrupted. Right now, only a few sandy tracks cross through the steppe. They don't pose a problem for the saiga, 
but the pressure on the animals is increasing. The saiga um, survived the Holocene extinction, so it's a pretty tough animal. Uh, but whether it can survive the human uh, Anthropocene extinctions, I'm afraid, is, is pretty marginal, I think. So we have you know, a number of factors coming up. You know, it, it, uh, you know the change in human uh, uh, impact on the environment directly um, you know, will just complicate this further. For the moment, the saiga have managed to come back from the brink. In the long term, however, their survival depends on whether the Kazakh steppe is left as an untouched paradise.